This is the Dominion City Tapes Ministry, bringing you the Word of God with simplicity and understanding. One word from God is all you need to turn your life around. Listen and be blessed. I want to unfold to us some heavenly specialists that carry out early assignment in some unusual ways. Have you ever heard of angels on assignment? It's not just that angels are on assignment, but I want to show you the some of the specialists and their areas of specialization for example one day god opened my eyes and i was able to see what really takes place when we speak write it down whenever you talk about answered prayers you are talking about ministry of angels it's not usually god who gets up to go and carry out these things the things we're going to release in a couple of minutes now personalities will actually follow you and get it carried out in your life. Can I hear you say amen? <laughs> but you see, it's not necessarily God Almighty who goes. Even in the Trinity, most of the time, when it comes to execution, the power to execute, it's usually the Holy Spirit who moves. The Father's job is to speak. The Holy Spirit's job is to perform. But now, beyond the Trinity, you have a chain of command. The body Bible calls the heavenly host. One of God's titles is the Lord of Sabbath. That word in English language means the Lord of hosts. Put bro, broken down for that. It means the commander of the heavenly army. Is the kind of title we give our president. We call them the commander in chief of the armed forces. God has a title that declares him a man of war. Telling you that God is not a civilian. He's a general. Of course, we have to find something bigger than general before we can qualify him. Because if human beings take that title. The man that is sitting on the throne is a warrior. And the Bible gives many examples of how he has fought in the battles. Nothing moves God to appear and fight on the scene like where his covenant people or friends are under attack. How many of you tonight need God to maybe shake something or move a few things, kill something or cut down something on your behalf? Let me see your hand. Mm. You are in my company. Mm. So we have the army of God. The heavenly and the earthly. The earthly is the church. In the Old Testament it was the nation of Israel. A church is a force to be reckoned with. The most powerful force on earth. Because that's one force that can bring in the intervention of the superpower. I didn't say superpowers. There are not two. There are only one. Now you know that if there is a small country in Africa like Satome, as small as they are, but if they have a battle, America will fight. That country cannot be treated with disrespect. That was the secret of the nation of Israel. Very small. If you even go to the map, sometimes you can't see the so called Israel. You'll be looking for it. Daniel chapter 10. That's where I stopped last Tuesday. When I dealt with the, level, the different categories of delay, I got to this point and told you we are beginning a journey of spiritual warfare one thing about battles you should know the bible will say Gideon led an army and dealt with the Gibeonites then you hear something like and the land had rest 40 years you hear how Deborah led an army and they conquered the enemy and the land had rest 40 years and the land had rest 20 years. 
I want to announce to you by the end of the seven weeks what I'm going to take you through in these coming seven weeks. Eh? You're going to reap the reward of it for years. Daniel chapter 10 verse 12. Then he said to me, Angel Gabriel who is also one of these heavenly specialists I'm talking about. But I'm going to show you there are areas of specialization. And then you learn from tonight how to call them for specific assignment. Because the Bible said, are they not all ministering spirits? Send forth. That means as far as God is concerned, they are already commissioned. Send forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. Hebrews 1.14 said, they are ministering spirits commissioned to minister for. When I was younger in the faith, I thought ministering for is the same thing as ministering to. They are not the same thing. To minister for. The word minister for means somebody that waits on you to carry out your instruction, to carry out your wishes, to carry out your desires. That is what they've been commissioned to do for those who are heirs of salvation. How many of you are heirs of salvation? You know you are giving your life to Christ. You have received salvation. If you have not given your life to Christ, when I say command these people to move, don't give them a command. Beg God to send them. But if you are an heir of redemption, then the scripture says you are heirs of God and what? Joint heirs with Christ. That means the authority Jesus has over them, you also have the right to use it. So when you say in the name of Jesus Christ, angels, go forth and cause the money to come. Angels, go forth, cause customers to come and clear these goods. Market will see when that day. That's when you realize that there are all kinds of forces that operate in the marketplace. Somebody is going here, he says he's going to shop B. Something just gives that. Why don't you look at this shop? mobilizers of customers we will learn how to release them I have some very serious things you know, if the job you are doing you don't like it you can get a new one within these 7 days I am telling you I pray I get to that one tonight if I am not but I will somewhere when you learn to get them to work you can even get a job when you don't need Daniel chapter 10. Do not fear Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before God, your words were heard. That means as far as God's end is concerned, the prayer has been answered. But when God's end is taken care of, it's not enough. Between God and you, there are agencies of provision. There are agencies of answer prayer. There are agencies of deliverance. There are agencies of divine healing. They are called angels. A man came to Jesus. He said, I'm a man under authority. I understand what you're doing. Because I myself, I'm, I'm, I'm a commander in the Roman army. I said to one, go, he goes. I said to another, come, he comes. So I don't need you to come under my roof. Just speak the word only. And my servant will be healed. Because I know that your job is to issue the instruction. The job of these angels is to carry it out. I don't have to see them to know that they are there. That's why Elisha the prophet, when he was surrounded by the armies of the Assyrians, and his servant, who is going to replace him when he dies, was shaking. He said, is this how you're going to do the ministry of prophet when it's your turn? He said, Lord, give him the revelation that I have. Open his eyes. Lift up your hands. Say, Lord, open my eyes. Show me what this man is talking about tonight. And the Bible said, the Lord opened the eyes of the young man. And he saw chariots of fire, horses of fire, round about Elijah. Then he understood why the man can tell Naaman, go and wash seven times. He's one of these men that will carry fire and drop in the water why he will stand here and point at a person be healed, he gets healed those pointing a finger heal people, he understand how these people are the ones assigned to carry out the words of the prophets 
where he said, I am the Lord that confirming the words of my servant and performing the counsel of my messengers. It is these unseen forces that actually get the job done. For the scripture said, Bless ye the Lord, all ye his angels that hearken to the voice of his words. Their job is to be listening. When God's word is declared, they move. When the name of Jesus, the authority in it is exercised, they move. Now the devil has his own army. And the church seems to study more of the devil's own army than our own. So we seem to know what the devil is doing and the different ranks. The demon asked mother, demon this, asteroid. You see people listing the names of demons. How many angels do you know? Ah, did you hear what is happening in the camp of the Philistines? The name of one giant is Philist, is Goliath. Goliath also has five brothers. And this by the time you finish, you don't know what you have. Understanding your enemy is important. But understanding who you are is more important. From the first day you opened your mouth, you were heard. And then Gabriel said, I have come because of your words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. Behold, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me. For I have been left alone there with the kings of Persia. Now, therefore, I have come to make you understand what will happen to your people, the children of Israel, in the latter days. For the vision referred to many days yet to come. Verse 20. Then he said, Do you not know what you, do you know why I've come to you? Now I must return to fight with the prince of Persia. And when I have finished with him, indeed, the prince of Greece will come. Many things we can discuss from this part. Now you see the negative side of the word of the spirit that the demon powers are also in operation. And their interest is to hinder the affairs of God's people. Why is it that sometimes the children of Israel are defeated in battle? What simply happens is that whenever they offend God, God withdraws the angelic protection. And the moment they withdraw the angelic protection, all of these princes, all of these demon powers who operate from the realm of the spirit, they can tell when there is nothing protecting them. Satan said, I'm under frustration. God said, what is your problem? He said, have you not made a hedge around Job, around his house, and around all that he has? Only you notice the three things they protect. They protect the man, they protect his family, they protect all his properties. I said they protect the man, they protect his family, they protect all his properties. He said, have you not made a, a hedge what type of hedge? Angelic hedge. Why is a hedge? Kaba, Kosiga. Just stand up here. Can I get six young men fast? Do your hand like this as if you have a, a sword. And then surround this man. But don't look at him. Look at the opposite direction. Surround him. The opposite way. Be looking the other way. But hold your hands around. One, one hand. This is a hedge. It's a wall of defense. The Bible said in the book of Psalms, the angels of God encamp round about. Encamp what? What is the purpose of the roundabout? You come from the east to attack. Uh, uh, it's too hot. You go back to from the south. Aye. You come from the west. Hey. You try this. Hey. It's okay. Let's go to school. I know where his kids attend school. You get to that point. Hey. One shot crossed the devil's ear. He takes off and flies off his head. I'm going to attack his dad. As he gets there, hey! Then he goes to heaven and says, Lord, mm -mm, this is too much. You put security around him, the man, around his family. I've gone to the shop to attack his business in Peregrine. You can't break through. Give me an opening. Give me just clear, just one opening. A hedge is a heavy wall of defense. We talk about the wall of Jericho. This one covers you all around. Let me show you an example of a hedge. Genesis chapter 3. Oh Lord, help me. You know, I've seen 
visions of heaven. There are some things I can tell you. But it's better to give you visions of the earth. Maybe it might make this thing easier. For example, if you get to heaven, after crossing, the gates alone are heavily guarded. There are 12 gates, but each one is so heavily guarded, nobody comes from outside that terrestrial realm unless there is permission to allow you in. It was so bad. This security system is so bad that when Jesus, the Son of God, rose again from the dead and began to ascend to heaven, when he got to the gate, they were laid him. You know, you know what Joshua said to the captain of the Lord's house in the book of Joshua chapter 6? He said, are you for us or for enemies? We saw drawn. The Bible said that the captain had a drawn sword and Joshua drew his own sword. And who is he fighting here? Not a human being. One thing about military people is whenever you see a policeman and you know how to read ranks or you see a soldier and you know how to read ranks, you can tell this one, uh, this one is an officer, he's not a recruit. Even those who have matured a little in the things of the spirit. When I sit down and listen to men of God, I can tell a few things. I can tell the authority from where we minister are not the same. Neither is the anointing with which we function. The devil knows who is who. That's why he could say, Paul, I know. Ah, if he tells me to go, I'll go. Jesus, hey, mm -mm. no go area. But Oga, who are you? Hmm? If he had any hidden ID card or any credential, he should have said it at that time before the beating started. <laughs> you know, a plain clothed policeman can appear in your house. But by the time you say, Who are you? Or who gave you the right to come and arrest me? You say, I'm Inspector John. I have license for your arrest. Warrant. Even if I don't have the authority, the authority that sent me. <laughs> that's what they mean by that by the time they tell you they have such warrant from a higher authority you bow so demons know when the roads are clear they know when there is no security around you they know when there is no defense so they rush in and attack but as long as the encampment the hedge is there. The devil will remain frustrated all his life. All he can do is dream of one day he can catch you. All he can do is wish I can lay hands on this guy. All he can do is gnash his state, but he can't. The same way Gabriel said something that was securing the kingdom of Persia, a supernatural force to establish a barricade over this territory resisted me for 21 days. That's how angels secure a barricade over God's people and they don't allow any force to penetrate. That's why your work with God is so important because the angels are there only because of your relationship with God. You offend God to the point of causing him to withdraw them you become cheap meat. And that's when the prince of Persia traveled all the way for his country, led a host of demon powers, and at the physical realm, he led a host of soldiers, and they came there and captured the children of Israel and put them in chain and carried them to Babylon. That does not happen. That happened because their defense was gone. I remember the time of Ichabod, where they captured the ark. Let me show you something in that ark. Do you know where that ark is? I, 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 there is a vision of heaven. I want, when you get to heaven, apart from the gates that are guarded and there are levels of security as you approach the throne, far towards the entrance of the gate of the throne, where God sits, you have what is called the Star of David. What is it? It's a flaming sword that formed the shape of the star, fighting, moving in, in four direction. Unless you are permitted to enter, it can cut you into two if you try it. 
I don't know if you have read Moses' description of the tabernacle he built. And God said, build it according to the pattern that was shown there from above. And when he started getting to the holy place, God said, anytime you build any curtain that leads into the next level, draw pictures of cherubims there. Let people know they are security at this point. If, for example, you're supposed to come with the blood or come with incense and you presume to cross, you will be cut down. Apart from this, you don't get to the throne itself. You see these creatures that have four heads each. The scriptures say they have eyes in all directions. I'm not just talking about seven eyes or ten eyes or twelve eyes. Eyes, innumerable eyes on their legs, everywhere, head on top of their head because they cannot miss any direction. They don't need to turn around to see something. They see in all directions. And the Bible says the whole throne is guarded with these creatures that are called cherubims. And the other living creatures are called seraphims. Whenever God needs to move and make a visit, they move with the throne and God all at the same time. The truth is, if the devil has succeeded really in defeating the angels and the archangels, before getting to God, there is one last group he has to contend with called the cherubims. And when he's through with that, he has the seraphims. They cover that throne. What I notice about the war in the Bible is that when the devil misbehaves, God didn't even ask the cherubims to deal with him. He asked for an archangel, somebody lower, to show him that you're a small boy. And Michael stepped out and threw him down. The Bible said, I saw the devil. Jesus was narrating the war in heaven. I thought it lasted for a thousand years or one billion years. You know what he said? I saw Satan like lightning. That's before you blink your eye and recover. The man is already falling. The battle was over. I like that kind of God, though. That's the one I serve. I don't know about your own. Huh? I don't know about your own. It takes you seven years to defeat one devil. Huh? No. The devil found himself falling. How? Like a lightning from heaven. Have you seen specks of? dust or light or, or, or light or shooting stars falling that's how he landed on the ground I said ah is this real am I dreaming I wonder what would have happened if God has allowed him to come that would have been distortion I'm sure he didn't want distortion yet why he wanted human beings made from dust to teach principalities and powers the manifold wisdom of God God said this devil you want me to destroy so you say it's God that destroyed you no we are going to write another chapter in history. Let me now go to the dust. And make some people and put my image in them. Then I will leave them with the responsibility of dominion to trample you under their... That's why we are here this night. Oh. How many of you are ready for the job? This is the job you are, you are, you are here to do. He said, may the Lord bruise Satan under where? He said, you shall tread upon serpents, upon scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and yet not we by enemies. What? Why? I have a hedge. Everyone say, I have a hedge. Verse 21, uh, for Adam and his wife, the Lord made tunics of skin and clothed them. That's the first blood covering in the Bible. He covered them, covered their nakedness because sin stripped these people naked. Anytime you see the blood, you see a hedge. Say it. You see a hedge. In Egypt, why God asked them to put the blood on every door on the same night that the angel of death was passing? God said, If the blood appears, I will appear. So that as the angel of death pass, I will not suffer him to touch any house where the blood was found. The simple implication is this. Whatever house has the blood covering, has angelic covering. 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? There was war in heaven. Satan and his angels. Michael and his angels. That war resulted in crisis on earth. Revelation chapter 12. And the Bible said, they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimonies. In other words, two things. If the blood covering is on their house, the angels that threw Lucifer down will also protect that house. But blood is one. It's not only blood that is needed. We will get to the other one. What you say. The power of the things you say with your mouth. We will get to it very soon. But uh, Genesis chapter 3. I want you to see something that happened here. Um, uh, the Bible said that God made a covering for man. And then the Lord said, Behold, man has become like one of us. To know good and evil. This guy knows to, he's wise now. <laughs> I want you to notice. He said, now lest he put out his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore the Lord sent him out of the garden of Eden to till the ground from which he was taken. So he drove out man and he placed a cherubim at the east of the garden of Eden and a flaming sword which turned in every direction to guard the way to the tree of life. At the gate of the garden, which is in the east, God placed a cherub. The same kind of people that guard his throne in heaven. God said, I need one on earth. Around the tree of life, which is the most important thing here, God put flaming sword moving in every direction. Cut down anybody, whether he's a serpent or a demon or man. I read that one day. I said, Lord, hey, why did you do that? He explained it to me. If Adam had eaten of the tree of life, Adam would have become a complete devil. The only difference between him at the time he fell and the devil is that he was still redeemable. Redeemable means we can still buy him back. We can still save him. Blood can be shed for his redemption. But if he eats of the tree of life, he becomes immortal in his sin state. Because sin state is the nature of Satan. He has already received that nature. And he becomes immortalized in that state. He is now a complete devil. There is no difference. The devil's children and the devil have the same nature. The only difference is that one can be saved, the other cannot. Because the one that cannot be saved is already immortal. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you make the devil a man, he has a chance to be saved. And the Lord said, instead of protecting the tree, the original mandate of that cherub and that sword is to protect Adam. Because of sin against me, he lost his protection and see him kicked out where the devil can harm him. And then the protection remains for the tree. I'm glad to announce to you if you're a child of God, you are not touchable. I'm not flattering, I'm telling you facts. I say you are not touchable. The way some of them say this, amen, they don't believe it. First John chapter 5. You have seven weeks to do some exploration with me and the cumulative impact of this revelation will bring a visible transformation in your life and in everything that has to do with you. I show you that I want to see the result in three dimensions. Your life, family, and whatever you do or whatever belongs to you. First John chapter 5 verse 18 we know that whosoever is born of God does not sin. He check it in literal translation. He means he does not make a practice of sin. A Christian can make a mistake, may fall, like the scripture said, when the righteous falls, uh, may fall seven times but he rises up the point is a Christian may, can make a mistake and there is provision the Bible said if anyone sin we have an advocate with the father but the word said if 
That means that possibility exists there. We have an advocate with the Father, the man Christ Jesus. And if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us. But this scripture says, everyone that is born of God does not live in sin. Everyone that is born of God does not make a practice of sin. The reason is because you need to know the relationship between sin and opening the door for the devil. So if you break the hedge, the serpent will bite you. The same hedge, which is a defense, you can open it, you can break it and open a door for the enemy to enter. And then they say, ah, that believer died in an accident. People don't know what was going on in his personal life. God's name gets disgraced. Because he looks as if God could not protect his people. A young man fought his pastor. The man of God said, have you ever read in the Bible, touch not my anointing? He said, to hell with you and your. And he was a young pastor in training. The man quoted another scripture. He said, to hell. That's a dangerous thing to do. He said, he that is awful rebuke and will not heed he will be cut off suddenly and without remedy. The same way he will not allow correction. That's how his being cut off will be without remedy. I think a couple of days after that, neighbors were crying around his house and they broke his door and found him born to charcoal, dark black. And nobody has been able to explain what kind of fire did that because he didn't touch any other thing in that house. But he was burnt. Some were expanding the theory of acid, but they checked his body. Acid leaves certain traits. It wasn't acid. Black. Like coal. And the door was broken into. There was no sign of penetration anywhere. Nobody knows still today. But those of us who know the laws know. How did the devil get the right to do such things? The Bible said, a rebellious man see a rebellious man a messenger of death shall be sent after him this is scripture all of them check them Judas didn't he die absolute die. check all of them Korah those ones were buried alive with his family the only one that didn't die till today in the whole bible the only the only is Miriam because Moses prayed of her problem so if you are rebelling, make sure the prophet is your brother. Because when he looks up, looks down, the only sister I have, he might just change his mind. The only rebel that escaped in the Bible. The only. After some days of leprosy, the ones that operated under Paul, what Paul said is that he handed them over to Satan. They will destroy. So they will learn how not to blaspheme. First John chapter 5. There is something I'm trying to get for you to see. How many of you want to be secured for the rest of your life? Let me see your hand. Uh, then don't break your own defense with your own hand. Now, before the children of Israel go for what God put it in the scripture. I don't have the time to read all that. He told Moses the priest will have to come and check out the soldiers. And there are some things he will find that man has to leave lest he dies in the battle. God wants to be sure that every man that is stepping into battle is properly covered. Uh, is somebody hearing what I'm saying? I can shoot on your behalf. But for next Tuesday, I'm going to arm you to kill. And that's why I'm doing all this preparation now. You know, some people don't understand. Uh, deliver ministers, they went here after breaking courses, uh, uh, car had accident, everybody died. It's not true. Something is wrong. How does the priest Prepare those soldiers for battle. First, there are some things he tells them. If you know you are not whatever, just pack and go home. Then they offer a sacrifice and it is with the blood that they are covered. I told you anywhere the blood is found, angelic hedge is what? Found. That's why in the battle, have you ever wondered how can one man kill 1,000 people? You know they die. Are you not human beings? Are you not a human being? You are 1,000, even 50 people. As you are fighting this five in the front, what about others coming from the back? The problem is, you can't penetrate from the back. 
there are other people facing this way, killing. In the battle Joshua led against the five kings, he said there were more that died by the hand of the Lord than the ones that the children of Israel killed by their own sword. Psalm 44. We have heard with our own ears, O God. Our fathers have told us what work thou didst in their days in the time of old. You know all the wonderful things you read about in the Bible? How thou didst drive out the hidden with thy hand and plantest them. He's talking about how they possess the promised land. How all those giants were killed. I want you to notice. He said, hmm, how thou didst afflict the people and cast them out. For they did not they got not the land of their possession by their own sword. Neither did their own arm save them, but thy right hand, thy arm, the light of thy countenance, because thou hast favored them. Because of what? Thou hast favored them. Now you understand why Joshua caught that secret. He said, if the Lord be pleased with us, he will give us this land. In other words, the first law in battle is to make sure that your relationship with God is sound. And anytime you have a war declared on you by the enemy, the first thing is not, ah, Satan, I bind you. No, no, no. The scripture says, submit yourself to God. Then, resist the devil. The implication is, check your stand with God. If something is not right, don't declare war, don't fight go and amend it first. The first principle of victory is righteousness. What is righteousness? Right standing with God. What is right standing? Right relationship with God. What is right relationship? Standing in a position of favor before God. That is the key to conquering every enemy. Righteousness is first a position then a relationship that position creates a relationship and then it's an act. We are given that position in Christ, but we live a life that keeps that relationship on. Because when you sing, you break fellowship with God, my friend. And if you don't repent and confess it, that fellowship remains broken. It does not affect your position but it affects your relationship. Communication is tampered with. Favor is tampered with. You are still my son. But we have not been talking for the last three days. You want to get money like you used to get pocket money for school. You don't get. The man is not happy. What does it take? You just repent and apologize. That thing is cleared up and favor is restored with restoration of favor all lost benefits come back the church today needs to be taught small distance first first john chapter five he said you see their sword for they did not get the land of their possession by their own sword verse three neither did their own arm save them but thy right hand thy arm the light of thy countenance because thou hast favored them verse four now says something he said thou at my God. Thou art my king, O God. Command deliverances for Jacob. Everyone say, Lord, command deliverance for me. Say tonight, Lord, issue a decree for a restoration of all the years that the canker war has eaten. That the palmer war has eaten. In my life, in the name of Jesus, Lord, command tonight deliverance for your church come and deliver us for my family come and deliver us for me in the name of Jesus be your mouth ask God to intervene whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven I issue a heavenly decree whatever has been tying your life down it is crushed at this minute whatever has been hindering you is destroyed at this minute all the forces that have gathered against God's people, we scatter them by the power of God. In the name of Jesus, we declare them scattered. All tokens, all 
other elemental things that have been used to set up an ordinance against you, we set it on fire. We burn it to ashes. Every hindrance on your business, hindrance in your relationship, every hindrance in your personal life, every hindrance in your spiritual life, we declare destroyed. Command deliverance for your people. Command deliverance for their businesses. Command deliverance for their finances. Command deliverance for their families. Command deliverance for this ministry. Command deliverance for this church. Command deliverance for every one of these brethren. In Jesus' name. Father, I also lift that statement I made in your presence. That now I extend the mighty hand of your deliverance to everyone associated with this ministry. Present here or not, they will tap into the seasons of breakthrough. In the name of Jesus Christ. As he that goeth to the battle, let it be to he that stayed with the stuff. Glory be to you. And then lift your hands and just give him praise. I saw arrows flying in every direction. I saw arrows flying in every direction. The arrows of God's deliverance. 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 Yabarabo, Sorobobo, Yegelege, Segele Baba, Saraba Baba, Sirolo, Lebo, Chegelebas, Sugra Baba, Solo Lebayaba, the anointing for warfare is here. Teach our hands to war. Teach us terrible things. He said, call upon me and I will answer thee. And I will show thee great and mighty things without knowing us, Lord. Teach us many things we don't know, Lord. He said, I right hand shall teach thee terrible things. Get us with strength in this place to conquer, to possess the promised land, to possess our possessions. Let's not just be one of those who talk about it, who wish about it, who dream about it, but fail to possess it, but we'll be gathered with strength like the tribe of Judah. We'll be gathered with strength like you help David, like you get a Joshua to go in and possess the land. A weakness depart in the house, from this house. It will smallest among us be a thousand. And men and women from here will begin to take nations and take cities and take territories. They begin to possess the wealth of the nations and the wealth of the wicked. Lift up your hands. Ask God for grace to possess. There is power to possess in the business arena. There is power to possess in the ministry arena. There is power to possess. You cannot be a weakling in the kingdom. You cannot be a weakling. You are from the tribe of Judah. You are from the tribe of conquerors. You are from the tribe of overcomers. You are from the tribe of dominion. May the heritage of the tribe of Judah the spirit of dominion and leadership and conquering rests upon this house. May the spirit of prosperity and, and wisdom rest upon this house. May the spirit of favor and grace to conquer, grace to possess come upon this house. Everyone that comes here that identifies with us, that strength will come upon him. 
the grace to be faithful the grace to follow you faithfully let you rest upon this house any strange garment that any of this people are wearing garment of iniquity, garment of sin garment of weaknesses garment of immorality, let it be relifted at this moment, let the garment of dominion and loyalty be placed back on their life, let the spirit the garment of priesthood, the garment of kingship, the garment of dominion the garment of favor, let it be placed upon their lives yes she gets we burn everything that is son of the flesh we consume that which is born of the flesh and that which is born of the spirit will rise and dominate we dethrone the dominion of the flesh and establish the dominion of the spirit in the lives of your people glory be to your name lift your hands and just give him praise Lift your hands and worship Him. Hallelujah. 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 Oh Lord, we worship you. First John chapter 5, just before the book of Revelation. You are going to enter into a covenant tonight with God on the area of your security. That an everlasting hedge be placed on your life that the enemy will not be able to penetrate. And then you are going to send a prayer into your future. I saw a vision while I was worshiping in the spirit I saw it here in three different pictures he appeared to me he came and passed another one passed and the third one passed and I understood it immediately the Lord showed me Peter the apostle he said Peter was one of the strongest force the master had the devil saw a time Peter would make one great mistake he was going to deny Jesus and he set his ambushment on that part waiting the moment it took place capitalized on it to destroy his faith Jesus also saw it ahead of time and said Peter the enemy has desired to see if you like weeds to see if you like corn sent a prayer covering her head that when you get to that junction where you will fail the plan he had to penetrate and utilize that one mistake and destroy your whole life will not happen Peter but rather after you have passed that experience use it use that experience to restore and strengthen your brethren another picture all before me was a picture of David And the enemy came again at a strategic point. Got him to mess up. He saw David making a mistake under pressure. Saw his master under pressure, sacrifice where he shouldn't. David under pressure numbered the nation of Israel and offended God. God withdrew. The devil cashed in on it and about 70 people died in the midst of the confusion David was crying God said don't you know what rebukes the hedge that is the blood take a sacrifice put it on the altar and the destruction will stop what brings the hedge is the blood where the blood is found the angels fight don't you understand that the David, my friend, is to throw yourself at the mercy of God and put a sacrifice on the altar. Call for the blood. The 
that's what the old timers knew they plead the blood they plead it the way you plead in the court they appeal to the efficacy of the blood and dangerous times of need and I saw Joshua the high priest standing with dirty garments and Satan was standing at his right hand to resist him the devil is an opportunist if he finds one opening he will maximize it do you know that Job lived for 90 years the devil couldn't touch him at the 90th year of Job 90 years at the 90th year the devil found just one tiny opening he destroyed so much I'm glad that God gave Job double for his trouble but you can also prevent what Job suffered the Bible said having done all to stand put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wise of the devil the scripture also said that you may be able to stand on the evil day on the day of attack having done all to stand we are living in the last days my friends you are going to bring security a hedge over your life over your family over everything that belongs to your finances, to your business, to your career, to your properties. Read that please. Look at, look at it. First John chapter 5. Verse 18. We know that whosoever is born of God does not sin. He doesn't make a practice of sin. But he who has been born of God keeps himself and the wicked one does not what? Touch him. The problem is keeping oneself from sin. If you do that, you don't have to worry about the devil. And the problem is the one that is standing today. Ten years now makes one mistake and the enemy uses it to destroy everything. We have to learn the power of God's mercy. We have to learn the power of the blood. No matter how righteous a priest is, he must understand the necessity of a sacrifice. The Bible said, he keeps himself, the wicked one does not touch him. Verse 19 said, but we know that we are of God and the whole world lies under the power of the wicked one. So we are the only few that are exempted from Satan's torment and torture in this world. The rest of the world, people who are not saved, are under the power of the wicked one. Those few that are exempted, those who belong to God, those who are born of God. For whatsoever is born of God overcoming the world. But then he said, that one that is born of God must keep himself. Keep himself for what? Sin. We know that whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. He doesn't make a practice of sin. He must keep himself. And if he does, the wicked one cannot touch him. It can't kill him by accident. It can't kill him by poison. It can't kill him by plane crash. You can't poison him. It is so possible. There is too much hedge. You have to appreciate the value of living a godly life. You have to appreciate the value of living a holy life. You have to appreciate the value of living a righteous life. You have to appreciate not only the value of your right standing with God, but to maintaining a right relationship with Him. That is the key to your security, my friends. It doesn't matter the kind of forces that are being released in these last days. They can't near you. Beyond all this, I give you two secrets. Because men sometimes, even in moments you might not know, you have to know the power of the blood. They overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimonies. They overcame him by the blood of the lamb. And by the word of their testimonies. Lift up your hands. Make a covenant with God for your protection. For the rest of your life, the enemy will not be permitted to afflict you. Will not be able to break your defense. 
see how you're doing Jesus said Peter Peter I have prayed for thee you can send a prayer ahead of you that Lord even if by any means something goes on and I make any mistake let mercy speak to me on that day you know why I'm telling you this because Moses prayed for everybody but one day he needed somebody to pray for him he struck the rock two times there was no intercessor Job prayed for his children his family one day he needed somebody to pray for him and that day there was no intercessor for if I find a man among them the Bible said and then you can lift up your hand and say Lord Jesus you prayed for Peter look into my future anywhere there is anything anything at all that can open the door to allow the enemy wreck damage the bible said that you have valived to make intercession for me that the reason you are standing at the right hand of God is to make intercession for me you pray for Peter Lord pray for my secret you can also say Holy Spirit in hours of need even when I don't know what to pray for as I ought to the Bible say you make an intercession for me with groanings that cannot be uttered. You pray for me, for you know the mind of the Father. You know the strategies of the enemy. Help me at such time, even when I don't know what is going on, to pray in a language I might not understand. When I open my mouth, let defense flow out of my mouth. Let the hate be rebuked. Let the damages be restored. Go back to my past. Anything that happened in my past that is affecting me today, Lord. Go back to my present. Anything that has happened in the present that is affecting my future. Go to my future. Anything that will happen in the future that will affect your plan for my life. Let it be brought before you today. Let it be dealt with because of the blood. Let it be dealt with by the power of the blood. Let mercy speak for me. Let mercy speak for me. Let mercy speak for me. May Jesus, my high priest, speak for me. Let him speak for me. Let the voice of the Holy Spirit cry out for me. Cry out for my deliverance. Cry out for my, my pardon. Cry out for my security. Cry out for my defense. You are the Alpha. You are the Omega. You are the ever present help in a time of need. From the past to the present to the future. Let security be covered all over every aspect of my life. The family ministry our finances the business everything it belongs to us the marriage anything transaction that took place in the past that is affecting your life today ask God to go back it doesn't matter how many generations and clear that because the death of Christ paid for your past paid for your present and pay for your future if it's something your parents did and it's affecting you today plead the blood over it ask God to undo that ordinances of the ancestors anything in your future that will jeopardize God's plan for your life may it be amended today May total healing come over your life. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm sure you've been blessed by this message. For more of these and other inspiring messages by Pastor David Ogwili, please contact any Dominion City chapter all over the nation or Dominion City Lagos, 11 stroke 13 Jumat Olukoya. Phone number 0179-26879. 0803-718-3623-0803-351-4993 or email ncftapes at yahoo.com Still making eternal investment in your life.